Oh, hello. Welcome to the 2013 Hundy Challenge. Today we're going to be discussing Last House on the Left by Paul McCartney. You know, I try not to dig too deep into these novels, as you know, if, I, if you've been uh, watching the videos up until now. I try not to really do the research on them or read the foreword and stuff like that. Um, but as I think about it, you know, when I'm reading just for fun, I often do, you know. I like to know who the author is and where in their life they wrote these things. Um, when I read A Bend in the River a few weeks ago, maybe a little over a month ago, um, I didn't really care for it. It was kind of dense. It was kind of like, kind of like reading Conrad, but without any of the pleasure of Conrad, just the denseness of it. Um, and I didn't really especially care for it. It wasn't terrible, but it was, uh, on the denser side and kind of unpleasant. So as is my want, uh, especially during this challenge, when I pick up a book and I read it by an author, I assume that the next book by that author is going to be similar. And, uh, you know, sometimes this theory pans out. Sometimes the authors give you just wildly different books. Like, uh, you know, Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man and Finnegan's Wake were wildly different, you know, and uh, Sound and the Fury was very different from uh, Light in August. Um, so it's not like, uh, you know... A magical thing, but I assumed that A House for Mr. Beeswas was going to be pretty bad and pretty dense. Um, it was not. It was a lot better than A Bend in the River. And like I said, this is one of those cases where I would like to know, you know, did he write these books 20 years apart? Was this one, you know, earlier in his career when he was still had passion or later in his career when he developed as an artist and, uh, you know, whatever. Maybe I'll look that up someday. But probably not. <laughs> um, this book, though, is obviously, at least partially, autobiographical. Um, uh, the other thing, and I've mentioned this before, I appreciate when these books on the Modern Library list don't stick to, you know, like Regency era England and, you know, 1930s America, which is what the bulk of them seem to be. Um, this book actually takes place in Trinidad, which uh, there have been a couple of books that were you know set in the Caribbean, none in Trinidad. Um, I did meet a guy from Trinidad once, and so I was not shocked to learn uh, from this book that Trinidad is highly uh, Indian in population, as in the subcontinent. Um, which, you know, it's, it's unusual for the Caribbean. Um, I'm not sure exactly how Trinidad came to be that way. Um, I gather that it was, you know, a British colony and, and for some reason, a lot of Indians moved there. Um, and V.S. Naipaul is obviously Indian or, you know, Trinidadian Indian, um, and this is a story about, it's kind of, I assume it's a Romana Clef. Like I said, I don't really read too deeply into these books, um, into their histories anyway. Uh, I assume this is something of a Romana Clef, um, where Mr. Biswas is, uh, you know, V.S. Naipaul in, in disguise. Um... It's definitely a comedy of errors. It's definitely, um, it's a little bit ridiculous. You know, it's it was never really laugh out loud funny, which is fine. It's it's just a little odd. Um, I don't think there was ever really a part where I laughed. Maybe there were like two or three little like turns of phrases, but Mr. Beeswas. And he's called Mr. Beeswas. This is a really weird um, uh, idiom that Naipaul decided to use. But he's called Mr. Beeswas from before his birth. 
from his very conception, he's called Mr. Beast Boss. And we're never really given a good reason why that is. Nobody in the book calls him Mr. Beast Boss. Um, he doesn't appear to think of himself that way. It's just for some reason in the narration, he's always from from conception just called Mr. Beast Boss, which was a little off-putting to me because I was like, well, he's a baby. Surely they'll call him Baby Mohoon, which is his you know given name. But they don't. From the very start, they call him Mr. Beast Boss. Um, he's born under sort of a bad son or whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, the, his very superstitious parents take it that he's kind of a cursed little child. And nothing in the rest of the book really ever proves that false. He seems to have an amazing capacity to make poor judgment calls and a similarly amazing capacity for hubris and uh, just to consider everybody else to be a buffoon. It's weird in a way. You sort of want to sympathize with Biswas um, because his life is so fucking hard. But in another way, his own ego is really what drives most of the failures in his life. Um, he never stands up for himself when he should. Um, he never backs down from a fight when he should. He's, he's always just kind of complaining. And uh, what he really is, he's like a dog that bites the hand that feeds him. Um, he gets caught up. He, he sort of gets almost into a shotgun marriage. But not really. It was just him being an idiot. But he sort of gets shotgun married to this girl, Shama. And uh, her in-laws... Uh, take care of him for years and years and years, take care of him and his kids. And all he ever does is complain about their food and complain about how crowded their house is. And, um, I mean, you can sort of understand his point because they're they're The Tulsi's, the in-laws are not great people either, but Biswas also, it just kind of has a chip on his shoulder the whole time. So there's only so much sympathy you can have for him. I guess if you treat him as kind of like a buffoon character, kind of like a clown character, um, maybe that's amusing, but it's still kind of sad. Um, this book actually, in a sense, reminded me of The Adventures of Augie March, um, in that the characters just kind of can't seem to get their shit together. Um, and like when you, <laughs> why make a good decision when you can make a terrible one, you know? Uh, that seems to be Biswas's M.O. Um, I was surprised at how much better it was than A Bend in the River. Um, it was still a little dense, a little tough of a read, uh, but I would probably recommend this one much more highly than A Bend in the River. So thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time.